Nighttime! Word up, Internet. My name is Dr. Popular, and I am the creator of Knife Tank The Shuffling, a brand new card game for two or four players. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial, but I've only got 20 minutes. So I'm going to make sure it's nice and short. The object of Knife Tank is to try to be the first player to get your tank card from your side of the table to your opponent's side, or to destroy your opponent's tank. So there's two ways you can win the game, either by racing or through combat. Let's get started with what comes in the Knife Tank The Shuffling box. Uh, you have a choice of tank cards. Each of these cards is two-sided, and the tanks have uh, different numbers on them, indicating their health points and where the symbols are for the turret and the treads. So as you play the game, you'll find that some tanks feel like they move a little faster, some tanks feel like they move a little slower, but maybe have better reach or more health points. So these are your tank cards. You also have life track cards. Uh, this is how you keep track of your, your current hit points. Uh, instead of uh, using a piece of paper or dice or anything like that, uh, if your tank starts off at three, you just keep the three uh, on the table facing you. And as you take damage, you rotate the card to two and then to one. When you get to zero, game's over. Uh, Knife Tank also includes damage cards. That's these guys right here. Uh, again, instead of using dice to determine how much damage is dealt, each uh, knife card is going to tell you what cards are necessary from the damage cards. Uh, so if you have a knife card that has uh, a stun, a one, and a two required on, on it, uh, what you would do is you take the stun, one, and two out of the damage cards. You'd shuffle them up right in front of the opponent. You can do it secretly or you can try to psych them out with a magic trick. Uh, and then you have your opponent draw a card and that's gonna be the card that they, they do their damage. So in this case, they got a stun card, which means that they won't be able to play a movement card during their next turn. So those are the damage cards. Finally, you get the action cards. Now, action cards are these cards with the, uh, the yellow backs and the night tank on them. Uh, there are different types of action cards. Uh, it breaks down into three types of action cards. You have knife cards, uh, these are cards that when you're close to your opponent's tank, you're going to actually play and try to try to stab them. Uh, you have movement cards. These are usually fixed where you can only go forward or backwards from your tank. They've got the symbols indicating where it lines up on your tank uh, and uh, a little arrow pointing to where your tank's going to go. And finally, you have special cards. These are cards like spin or drop or flick or blow. Uh, uh, toss. <laughs> these are these are cards that are basically dexterity elements for the Knife Tank game. So those are the three types of action cards that you might have. At the beginning of a game, the first thing a player does is choose their Knife Tank that they want to play with and uh, close their eyes. Both players do this simultaneously. Close their eyes and place this somewhere on their edge of the table and then open their eyes when they're when they're done. So the card needs to line up on the back like right at the edge of the table. And from here on, their goal is going to be to reach anywhere on their opponent's side of the table. As far as uh, table size goes, I think about 36 inches, which is about 10 cards length. That's your ideal playing ground. You'll find that bigger tables make for a slower game and smaller tables make for a more heated, fast paced game. So once you have your tank picked out and you have it placed, you're going to look at the health indicator on the tank. And in this case, we have a three uh, as a health indicator. So I can find the corresponding life card that, that matches this. And I'm gonna take the three and put it somewhere on my side of the table so it's pointing towards me. After the players have both placed their tank card and set up their hit point card to show the, the number indicated on their tank card, then the next thing that they're gonna do is both players get dealt five cards from the action deck. Uh, these five cards go into their hand and during their turn, they can play two cards, and at the end of the turn, they draw back up to five. So you should always start a hand with five cards. Uh, the five cards are set up in a way where, on average, you'll probably get uh, one knife card, one special card, and three movement cards. So that's statistically what you might get. That being said, uh, it's possible that in the very first turn, you get dealt five special cards, or five knife cards, or five movement cards. It's totally possible. Uh, there's, there's nothing 
bad with that. Uh, if you ever think you have a terrible hand, you are allowed once per game to resupply your hand by discarding your hand and drawing five more cards from the deck. So here's how a turn happens in the game. Uh, both players are going to select two cards from their hand and place them face down. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select a movement card and a special card, but I'm not gonna show my opponent that. So place these down and have them, uh, make sure you know which card you're gonna flip first because you don't wanna flip them out of order. So when both players have played their two cards face down, they simultaneously take one card each and flip them. And that's the action that they're going to do. So uh, we both flip over our cards and then we both do those actions. Now the way that these actions are resolved is movement goes first, and then stabbing with the knife cards goes second, and then special cards go third, and if there's more than one special card, they're played alphabetically. So if both players play movement cards, simultaneously both players take the movement cards and place them and do their movement. Now the way that movement is done in this game is you'll notice that each tank has a turret symbol and a tread symbol. So tread symbols are the two squares, uh, on, on this card, they're here and here, and the turret symbol is in the center on this card. On other cards, the turret might be moved forward or backward, uh, so each card's kind of different. Now, these tread marks, these tread uh, symbols, usually are how movement cards are placed. So movement cards can usually be played uh, in either going forward or backward, and they're played by lining up the, the symbols on the movement card with the tank card. And then what you're gonna do is lift tank card and place it at the end of the symbol. So in this case, I started here. I take my movement card, I place it down. I hold the movement card while I lift the knife card or the tank card and I place it right at the tip. And you'll notice that at the tip of the arrow, usually there's a green line indicating how uh, your card should sort of line up. Um, you'll also notice that there's a yellow sort of exclamation point symbol uh, that'll match on your card, your, your tank card, with the movement card. So once you have this placed, you take the movement card and you put it in a discard pile and you are done with that turn. So if both players did movement, then those that happen simultaneously. Uh, if one player did movement and the other player did uh, stab, then the movement would happen first and then the stab would happen. Uh, and then special, so it's movement, stab, special. So in this case, we've both done our movements. Now I'm gonna play my second card. So both players take that second card they chose at the beginning of the turn, flip it over. And in this case, I played a special card, uh, which is blow. Um, so this would be resolved after uh, any movement and any uh, any stabbing cards have been played. So if it's now my turn, if, if the player has done their, their movement, um, the blow card specifically uh, says that from the edge of the table, I blow and my card moves or I move whatever I want to on the table. Uh, it's all fair game. You can move tanks on top of each other or blow a tank off the edge of the table. Um, that's the blow card. And then after I played that, I discard, I draw two more cards. So now I'm back up to five cards and we start the next turn. Now at the beginning of the game, you're probably not gonna play a knife card on your very first turn. The reason for that is the knife card actually needs to be able to reach your opponent's card from your tank. So it needs to be really close. If you are playing it on your first turn and your opponent's tank is way over here, you're clearly not gonna reach it. Now most knife cards have the, the turret symbol on them. This means that they can pivot in any direction, 360, from the matching symbol on top of the card. Now for my card, uh, my tank card, that's in the center, and so I can place this uh, knife card on top and pivot it. And as you can see, it overlaps the opponent's tank. Now you're not trying to overlap over the tank art. All you have to do is to get the, the knife card to overlap your opponent's card. Uh, this is considered a hit, whether or not it is actually touching the art indicating the tank. As long as the card is overlapping the card, that's a hit. Now, hit doesn't mean that you've taken damage right away. In this case, 
we have a knife card that has a zero, one, and one indicated on it. So I know that I've hit my opponent's tank. To find out how much damage you do, you take the zero, one, and one cards out of the damage cards. So you've got these three cards. Uh, you shuffle them up however you want. You can psych out your opponent if you want. You have them draw a card, and let's say they draw this center card. This means that they, they didn't take any damage at all because it's a zero. If they took uh, one of the other two cards, though, they would have taken one hit point damage, and they would change their counter down to, to probably two uh, from there. So that's how knife cards work. But it's also possible for tanks to do damage to each other by ramming. Now, when tanks ram, it just means that, that at the end of the movement turn, uh, the two tanks are overlapped. The two cards are overlapped. When tanks ram, it doesn't matter if both players moved or just one player moved. Both players have a chance of doing damage to the other player. Now, to find out how to do that, you just look at your tank card and their tank card. My tank card has a zero, one, and one on it, which means, again, I take the zero, one, and one and shuffle them up and have the opponent's tank draw one of these cards. Whichever card they take is gonna be how much damage they take. Also, your opponent is gonna do the same thing to you. Now, you don't have to do this simultaneous. You can uh, work out which order you wanna do it, but it is, they both do happen. So if one tank gets destroyed, the other tank uh, still has a chance of getting destroyed because the other player hasn't drawn their cards yet. So uh, after I've had my opponent draw the zero one one, their tank has a zero and one, so they would have me draw, and it would be a 50-50 chance that I'd get one point damage. So they would have me draw, I would have them draw, and you don't have to do that again for any more collisions. Uh, that only happens the first time you get overlapped on the uh, each other's tank. After that, you're allowed to move freely, or you can play knife cards, you can do whatever you want, um, you don't have to worry about collision again until after the tanks have become separated for a turn. Now, after that's happened, if they then ram again, then you go through the process again of doing damage for both tanks and checking to see who survives. As I said, the object of the game is to either destroy your opponent's tank or be the first player to reach uh, your opponent's side. Let's say um, I was playing a very defensive game here, so my tank is still close to my side, and my opponent is right next to the edge of the table. They're probably going to want to play a movement card for their turn uh, that will allow them to reach the edge of the table. And by edge, what we're looking for is the card actually has to be overlapping the edge of the table. But if the card falls off the table, they then restart the same way they did at the beginning of the game uh, by picking their card up from the floor, uh, bringing it back to their side, closing their eyes, and placing the card somewhere on their side of the table. If a, if a tank falls off of any side of the table, including your own or your opponent's, you start back on your side and you don't take any damage, you don't suffer any consequences, it's just a reset. So in this situation, let's say that uh, my opponent played this movement card. Now this movement card actually has a pivot symbol on it, and that means that uh, unlike other movement cards, you can actually move anywhere in 360 degrees. So they probably want to put this on top of their turret symbol and point it directly at the edge of the table and pick their tank card up, move it to the end of the arrow, and lift. Now, if they're really close, all you have to do is take a card and just move it. And if that card touches the tank, if it turns the tank, that means that they, they've won the game because they've gone over the edge. If it's shy though, then that means they still have another turn to go. And they wanna be very careful when they're playing their next card because it's very easy to go off the edge of the table. Again, if you go off the edge of the table, if you play too far, you just reset on your side. Now that we've talked about how the game is played and how turns happen and how you do your attacks or how you win by reaching the end of the table, let's talk about special cards. Special cards are action cards that have a special move on them that's unique to that card. The descriptions are usually written in a single word for each card, um, and that should help you figure them out. But I'm gonna go through the six that are currently in the game, and there might be more when the game finally comes to the market, but the six that are currently in the game and talk about how each one is played. Now, the drop cards, there are two drop cards. The object of this cards, 
when played is to drop them somewhere on the table that's not occupied by a tank. You need to hold your hand uh, at least a foot above the table um, and you drop it. You don't have to put a spin on it. You can put a spin on it, but basically you drop your card and wherever it lands, it'll stay. If it touches a tank, nothing happens. The card is just discarded immediately. If it doesn't touch a tank, it stays on the table until the next person uh, rolls over it. Now, this is where the drop cards are different. Um, this drop card has a heart on it, uh, and that indicates that it gives you one health point. So the first player that overlaps, that rolls over this card on their turn, uh, will get one health point. Now, movement happens simultaneously, so if two tanks end up touching it on their movement turn, then they both get one health point. And this only goes up to four, so you can't have more than four health points no matter which tank you have currently. Um, so once once the tank has claimed the, the, the special bonus, this gets discarded and it's off the table. Uh, it stays on the table until someone rolls over it. Now, let's say an opponent ro rolls over this landmine card. Um, this card has a chance of stunning, uh, doing zero damage or two. So you take out the stun, zero, and two cards uh, and you shuffle them up and have your opponent draw one. Um, so that only happens if they overlap that card. If a tank at the beginning of its turn uh, is right next to that card, and does its movement and somehow ends up on the other side of the card, um, they don't have to do this. This only happens if at the end of their movement turn, they're overlapped on that, on that card. Once you've rolled for damage and check and see how much damage they do, you then discard this drop card. Now, let's talk about stun real quick. Uh, stun basically means that for the next full turn, uh, a player can't play any movement cards. If they only have movement cards in their hand, they can do that discard, the resupply that we talked about, so they can discard their five cards and draw back up to five cards. If they still don't have the cards they need, then they just won't be able to do that, that turn. They won't be able to uh, play those cards for the next turn. So if they have one knife card and four movement cards, they can play that knife card, but then the whole next turn, the whole next move, uh, their opponent will be able to play an action card and they won't. So that's what the stun card does. Basically says you can't play uh, a movement card for the, for the next two cards that get placed down. Now, if a tank gets stunned and there's still cards on the table to be flipped over and one of those cards is a movement card, that still happens. It only takes place the next time that player who got stunned, the next time they place down cards, they can't place down movement cards. Continuing down the, the special cards, we have Flick, and the object of Flick is to place the Flick card on the edge of the table and to flip it, and that was a miss, so I, uh, you don't get take backs, but uh, let's just show that. There we go. So that's how Flick is played. Uh, it only does damage if it's if it hits the opponent's tank by landing on the opponent's tank or underneath the opponent's tank. So if this card flies over the tank, that's not a hit. A hit is only when the motion has stopped. If the cards are overlapping, then you check and see if there's a hit. In this case, it's a hit, so I do stun 1-1 one, one, and the opponent takes damage or gets stunned. The spin card is very similar to the drop cards. Um, the only difference is this is a one-time card. It doesn't stay on the table uh, when it lands. You are trying to drop it from one foot and you're trying to get it to land on your opponent's tank. If it lands, it's a hit. If it lands overlapping, if it misses the tank, nothing happens and the card just gets discarded. Toss is one of my favorite special cards. For this card, you have to stay away from the table and throw your toss card and you're trying to get it to land on your opponent's tank. Now, the key thing here is your hand's not allowed to cross over the table. So you have to do this all entirely behind the table. Uh, if your opponent thinks that you went too far over the table, they can call you on it and that's just gets discarded. Uh, so when you're doing your toss, you try to toss it and get it to land on your opponent's tank. If it lands, you roll for damage. And if it uh, misses the tank, uh, or if it lands on the tank and slides off, then it just gets discarded, nothing happens. And we already talked about Blow. This is another really fun card. Blow basically is uh, you discard the card, you 
bring your head close to the table from your edge of the table and without crossing the table, your head can't be over the table, you blow in one single breath and you can alter the table however you want. You're allowed to blow your tank really close to your opponent's edge, but remember if you go off the edge, you start back on your side. Uh, you're allowed to blow and two tanks might end up overlapping, at which point you do the general overlap rules for, for collision, where both tanks roll for damage. Uh, or you could even move a landmine. If there's a landmine or the health is on the table and you blow, maybe you end up uh, getting extra health points or blowing up your opponent's tank with a landmine that you blew onto them. So that's the blow card. Okay, a couple other uh, frequently asked questions. Once you have used up all the cards in the action deck, you then take the cards in the discard pile, you uh, shuffle them up and you put them back down face down and that's your action deck now. Um, if uh, a tank goes off the edge, like I said, it restarts back on their side, just like it did at the beginning. Um, the, the player picks up their tank, closes their eyes, and places it somewhere on the table. Um, there's no pre-measuring in the game, so you're not allowed to put down a card and, and check it out. You have to do it all by eye. Um, if you see a player getting really close, you can call them on it. This is all about like mentally judging the distance uh, and using your best guess on that. So you're not allowed to pre-measure anything. Uh, if at any point uh, turn order becomes uh, an issue, um, specifically if you have two tanks maybe close together and they both play movement cards, um, and one player is waiting to see what the other player does for move movement, if that happens, you can randomly uh, uh, determine who wins by taking out um, a one and a two and a zero maybe, uh, shuffling those up and having each player draw the one, two, or the zero, and whoever has the lowest number has to go first. As I said, simultaneous damage is a thing that could happen. It's possible for both players to lose the game on one turn. So it doesn't matter which order you do damage when, when you're doing uh, a collision, for instance. Uh, it's, it's totally uh, up to the players to determine which order they want to resolve that but both, both of those tanks will get resolved. Uh, it's not a matter of who resolves first wins the game. Both tanks have to do the resolution. And that's it for the two player version of Knife Tank. Uh, there is a four player version as well, but like I said, I just ran out of time. Basically the idea is you have two tanks on one side and two tanks on another. Uh, those tanks are on the same team and they're trying to score two points. You can either score a point by reaching the opponent's side or by destroying an opponent's tank. So if you destroy two tanks, uh, that is two points. Or if you get both cards to the end of the table, that's two points or any combination of. Now, once a card gets to the end of the table, they have to touch their side again before they're allowed to get a second point. The easiest way to do that is if you're at the edge of the table, play a move to fall off the table and start back on your side and then race back over again. Good luck scoring two points that way. I've never seen it, it could happen. If a tank gets destroyed in the four player mode, uh, that player is not out. They have lost, uh, well, the opponents have won uh, a point, but that player then closes their eyes and puts their tank somewhere back on the edge of the table. So basically they get a second life just like with the one player version, for the four player version, cards are placed down and revealed. Uh, currently in the game, the, this is only done with um, players playing one card each. So you'll have four cards face down and when all four cards are down, the players flip them and all of those actions are resolved. And then players redraw back up to five and do it again. That's it for the Knife Tank tutorial. Um, again, I'm Dr. Popular. If you have any questions, you can look on Twitter and Instagram uh, for at Knife Tank, just the word Knife Tank. Um, I highly recommend you to uh, use the hashtag, hashtag Knife Tank, when you're sharing photos of the game. Uh, I'd love to hear if you're having fun, if you have any questions, anything like that. Similarly, I am on Board Game Geek. Dot com. So uh, if you Google Knife Tank, probably one of the top results will be the Board Game Geek uh, forum post for that. You can put any questions in there. I'll try to have frequently answered questions, frequently asked questions. <laughs> I'll try to have frequently asked questions uh, up in my, my forum and I'll try to keep on top of those. Thanks so much. Cheers.